speaker is Kayla Green. Um, she's a PhD candidate in the Sync Lab at the Erasmus University of Rotterdam. And uh, she uses neuroimaging techniques in the field of developmental neuroscience. Um, and she aims to sort of create more societal impact um, through her research and her outreach. So um, I think I'm just gonna let Kayla just take it from there. So um, hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Kayla Green. I'm a PhD candidate um, at Erasmus University in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. And first of all, I would like to um, thank the organization for putting uh, this uh, amazing online event and for inviting me to uh, talk about citizen science uh, in general, but also with a little focus on uh, developmental neuroscience. So um, my work mainly focuses on uh, the development of emotional reactivity during adolescence and young adulthood and on the behavioral and you know, predictors of uh, well-being. And I'm very fortunate that I can do this uh, work in an amazing team called the SYNC Lab, uh, led by uh, Evelina Krone. And SYNC is very interesting because it stands for Society, Youth and Neuroscience Connected. So um, it is one of our missions to really connect science and society and to uh, create a more societal impact. So that's what I'm going to talk about uh, today. Um, so as I said, we really want to, uh, to uh, make a bridge uh, between uh, neuroscience and society. Um, but because we are all um, involved in uh, um, developmental neuroscience and uh, with uh, working with youth, for us, it's also very important that we give young people a voice, regardless of where they come from, um, and that we can use their voice as input in our research. So that is one of a uh, very important uh, vision of ours. And also, we're looking for ways in which we can uh, use our scientific knowledge that we have, that we have gained over the years, as uh, sort of inspirations for calls of actions that can be used by uh, young people, but also uh, by other parties, uh, for instance, uh, teachers, uh, parents, uh, policymakers, so that we can have positive change in society. So um, on the one hand, we want to bring our scientific knowledge to society. So from lab to society, we also do a lot of outreach activities. We haven't done a song yet, so maybe after your presentation, Stein, we will try this. I, I really liked it. Um, but we are, we are very busy with outreach activities and how we can translate our scientific knowledge and make it more accessible uh, specifically for youth. Um, but now we have also turned this focus and um, we're now also aiming to see what can we get from society. So what can society uh, teach us and uh, what kind of input can uh, all those different parties uh, give us so that we can become better scientists and that we can improve our uh, research. So uh, this is what we are currently are very uh, busy with. And uh, one of the ways to incorporate this kind of citizen science is through living lab activities. So a living lab can be seen as a user-centered and iterative open innovation ecosystem with a specific location within a city. So we, for instance, have a, a location in Rotterdam Zuid, which is a very uh, diverse uh, uh, community in Rotterdam. And um, before all the uh, uh, um, extra corona uh, uh, rules, uh, we were actually, uh, yeah, our aim was to at least one day a week be at that location. So not on our campus, not at university, but really in the city, in the community um, to be there so that people can come to us so that we can discuss with people, have co-creation, uh, really inspire each other and see um, how can we together work on uh, uh, scientific topics. But unfortunately, um, Corona came, uh, the rules uh, uh, became more strict, and um, at the moment everything is online, so we cannot do it. But it is, it's, it's still our, uh, uh, one of our central uh, goals that uh, we will, um, in the future, at least one day a week, be in the city, in the community, uh, so that we can really bring science and society uh, together. So 
what we want to do with a living lab is to make sure that we uh, involve youth, but also teachers, parents, all those different parties and stakeholders uh, in our research and design cycle. So uh, most of the time, especially in developmental uh, neuroscience, um, young people are only the participants in, in, in the research process. Um, and maybe at the end when we do some outreach activities, then they're also involved, but they're not really involved in the very beginning of the research process. And that is what we really want to change. So from the very beginning, when we're already thinking about our research questions, about uh, measures and instruments that we are using, we want to have them involved and think along. So really have that co-creation uh, with them uh, so that they can also become uh, what we call the citizen scientists and that we have a, uh, a common goal and, and co-creation. So um, it's also new for us. Uh, um, I mean, uh, this lab was first in uh, Leiden University and we only did fundamental neuroscience there. So when we moved to Rotterdam uh, in April last year, uh, this was one of the things that we said, okay, we want to try something new and this would be it. Um, but we're still also very in the beginning phase of, uh, of this and we're also, also trying ourselves uh, what works, what doesn't work. Um, but we really want to um, incorporate uh, uh, Living Lab as a new uh, uh, methodology in our research because we really think that it can uh, help us to become better scientists if we just listen to what the issues are uh, um, among youth, what they think is important to um, investigate, what they um, what the issues are in their lives and uh, in the community. If we just listen and uh, let them think along, we, we believe that it will help us to uh, uh, become a better uh, a scientist. So um, to do this, uh, we created a, a platform called Young Experts. And um, with this platform, we want to uh, engage youth and young people in uh, uh, research. So we have a website, an Instagram, and um, what we try to do is to provide access accessible and uh, uh, scientific knowledge about, about our topics. So in this case, uh, um, a development during adolescence. And what we try to do is as I said before, we, we give them the information and we want to see how can we use the scientific knowledge to turn it into calls for action so that we can do things to, uh, um, to make sure that the future and the life of young people uh, improves and becomes better. So uh, on our website, uh, young people can uh, uh, share ideas, they can send their uh, uh, thoughts and opinions about uh, topics and they also can like each other's ideas so that we can see um, uh, which idea is really uh, 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 shared among young people and they think that should be picked up on uh, either by us as researchers or by policymakers as they may think that there needs to be a change in, um, in the policy. So um, we just started with this, so it's very new. So um, in the future, we also hope that we can evaluate this platform to see if it really, on the one hand, helps young people to have a voice and to improve their life. And on the other hand, if it helps us to become a better scientists. So that is a more long-term uh, goal. Um, I want to show you an uh, example of co-creation because at the moment I'm uh, developing a new uh, well-being uh, paradigm uh, which is an, uh, uh, which is going to be an fMRI task uh, based on an uh, other fMRI task by a colleague of mine called uh, Renske van der Kruijzen. Um, she developed a, a self-concept task in which um, young people in the MRI scanner uh, they got these uh, uh, descriptions and uh, like for instance I am a smart and then they had to indicate to what extent they thought that these descriptions uh, fit uh, and uh, fit and applied them. Uh, and this way she um, examined the self-concept development during adolescence. And we want to do a similar thing uh, with the well-being, but instead of focusing on the literature on which items and descriptions we need to, uh, uh, to incorporate and which we need to use in the task, we really want to ask the young people themselves what they think uh, uh, the task should look like. 
and which items they think that are uh, uh, good to measure well-being. So this is one of our first attempts to uh, uh, establish co-creation and to develop a, a new instrument together with uh, uh, the group that is going to be our uh, participants in a later study. So um, these youth panels, um, um, as I said, is also new for us. So we're really trying to figure out um, how should you do this? Um, for instance, uh, in the beginning, we didn't even know, uh, even, even know how many people uh, uh, should be asked uh, if you have, for instance, 10 adolescents, is that too much or five? Is that too, uh, uh, a too small uh, sample size? So we're really trying to figure out how, how we can do this. But what we so far have learned is that if you do this with approximately six to eight adolescents and you do this live, so not online, then you will have uh, the best opportunity to really have them engaged and, and, and to start that uh, co-creation. And one of the questions that we will ask them with regard to the well-being task is which aspects of well-being are important to young people. So uh, we think that this may be different for young people than for um, adults or children. So for instance, we know from the literature that they uh, want to have impact, that they want to contribute to society, and that I think is very important to have autonomy and control. So these are aspects that uh, insofar um, were not that important in, in well-being uh, questionnaires or well-being tasks. And we want to see with these co-creations if indeed this aspect may be more important for adolescents. And if yes, how can we incorporate them in, in a new uh, instrument? But also a simple question like how do you measure well-being? So think that we can do this with a questionnaire or, or with uh, descriptions and uh, single sentences in an MRI scanner, but maybe they have different ideas on how we should measure this or uh, on how we should, on how we can make the task more engaging and um, to make sure that all young people uh, feel that they can uh, uh, participate in our study. So these are questions that we really haven't asked before um, to uh, young people and um, we're now making that change to see if um, this can help us to uh, create a, a better and a new uh, instrument. So uh, this is a, a small uh, example of how we try to incorporate uh, citizen science with the uh, neuroscience. It is really uh, difficult because it's way more easier to do this with within social sciences that use more behavior data and questionnaires and surveys. And for, I know that for an fMRI task, this is way more difficult, um, but I think it's very important to, even though it's difficult and it may not be for every discipline, um, that you still try to figure out what is possible. And even if you do not have them engaged in developing a new instrument, just asking them, um, what questions they have, what they think should be uh, investigated by research, what, what are the topics that are important to them, even those questions will help you, I think, to uh, broaden your perspective and to, uh, um, to become a better scientist. So I want to thank you all for uh, listening. And uh, just like Stein said, that, um, that he hopes that we will all use our talent to uh, have more impact with our papers and to uh, uh, have new ways of uh, uh, outreach activities. I hope that this uh, presentation will help you think of new ways on how you can uh, incorporate society in your research and how you can make the connection between uh, science and society. So thank you very much. I can ask a question if no one else has something because I'm interested in this um, I guess, like you said, if you have this living lab in pre-corona times, that is probably easier than in during corona times. Mm. But uh, are there other ways that you have been working with or that you know of that people are still conducting sim similar experiences, but then virtually? And whether that, um, whether that achieves what you wanted to achieve or, or whether that uh, brings its own new uh, difficulties? Yeah, so we have tried it ourselves to uh, do it virtually and online, but it's so difficult, especially with the adolescents. 
um, they're all on mute um, we don't see their faces and it's so difficult to get some input from them so we tried it uh, two three times but um, yeah I really prefer to do, to have the uh, physical uh, meetings and uh, in, in person and meetings um, but we have no choice at the moment so we have to do it with the things uh, we have and within the rules so um, now in the Netherlands, uh, uh, secondary and high schools are probably opening again. So next week, uh, together with the colleague Lisanne Te Brinke, we will have a small a brainstorm session at a school. Um, so that will be, uh, again, the first time since uh, a few months that we can do uh, such a, a brainstorm session in person. So I'm very curious how that will, uh, will be.